It is obvious. Brisbane is a city where the car is king. The streets in the central business district are wide with multiple lanes to make motor traffic flow fast. There is a small part that is pedestrianised, but most of the infrastructure was built for the specific needs of the car. A tough area for people cycling. Many of which choose to behave like a pedestrian. But these big roads have one unexpected advantage. There is space under them for cycling infrastructure. All along the river, Brisbane built the beautiful bicentennial cycle track. And at some locations, it is next to perfect. Wide, smooth and clearly separated from pedestrians. Because the river flows right through the city to the central business district, many people can use it to get there really well. But once you get off this track, into that city, it is a different story. You need to cycle on cluttered sidewalks and through dangerous junctions. There are some nice paths here and there, but the junction design leaves much to be desired. Brisbane has a shared bike system. The city cycle stations are everywhere. Thanks to the subscription of one of my hosts, I got to try out one of the bikes for a very short while. They are very heavy, but they ride really well. You do see people using the bikes, but as a whole, the system is not so well used as in other cities around the world. There is of course only one reason for that. The Australian Compulsory Helmet Law. Coming from a country where nobody wears helmets for ordinary cycling, it is strange to see all these helmets on people riding a bike, especially the people riding relatively slow. It is a fact that riding a bike is safer than walking downstairs, yet nobody in their right mind would force you to wear a helmet to walk the stairs. I've cycled for over 45 years without a helmet. I did not intend to start that day. But the police were so concerned about my safety that they stopped me. Yes, you can tell the police go out of their way to keep cyclists safe. But cyclists stay safe because of infrastructure, not because of what they wear. This is a great cycle track, but this is not. Look at the driveways and side streets interrupting the cycle path constantly. It is not even clear who has priority here. Some cycle lanes are okay. Some of the shared space is really not up to the world's best practice. This pedestrian cycle bridge is beautiful, although I would have liked to see a clearer division between cycling and walking. And this street clutter at the end of the bridge is really dangerous. So are these so called banana bars apparently there to keep motor traffic out of the cycle path. But these bars are right where your handlebars are. The scratch marks prove this is bad design that endangers cyclists. All in all, cycling in Brisbane was not so terrible. Sure, the cycle tracks are a bit narrow, but at least there is separation from the fastest type of motor traffic. Details make cycling unpleasant these posts in your path, for instance. Some of the cycle lanes are quite okay, and the wonderful riverside track is a joy to ride, even if you have to give way to the many pedestrians. Some of the drivers were even polite. And there are some nicer, quiet back paths and roads. But of course, I didn't cycle in the really bad streets, that need to be updated. It was good to see many people riding on a later night. They could have been training for their next cycle race, but I assume they came back from work. The potential for cycling in Brisbane is certainly there, but it needs a lot of work before cycling becomes a pleasant and safe thing to do.